I'm going to show you how to create this awesome text in After Effects. We will add light and shadow to the text, and we will make it editable, so you can reuse it in whatever projects you want. Let's jump in. So let's create a new composition, and straight away we're going to create some text. I'm just going to type make this. Let's center it using the align tool. I'm going to center the anchor point just out of force of habit by pressing Control, double clicking, pan behind. Let's select the text, press S, and scale it up a bit. Now we need to choose a font, but I'm going to choose a condensed font because it makes it taller, and I just think it looks nicer for this kind of thing. Next, let's select a color for our text. So I'm coming over here to the fill option, and I already have a color in mind, so I'm just going to paste in the hex code here, but you can pick whatever color you want. Press OK. Now let's duplicate this text by selecting it and pressing Ctrl D, and let's rename it to make this highlight. Let's change this to a much lighter color, not quite white, but close to it. So let's select our pen tool, and now let's draw a mask so that we're kind of isolating one corner or edge of the text, as if we had a light source up here, and we're selecting which parts of the text the light would hit. And we can adjust this by dragging the points around. Now this doesn't look great right now, so what we need to do is come to the blending mode for this, and select dissolve. And it still doesn't look great, so let's twirl it down, come down to the mask, and increase the feather amount. And just adjust this to how you want it. I'm going to go for around 20 pixels. And now we're going to do the same thing, but for the shadow. So let's again duplicate the make this text, drag it below, and let's rename this to shadow. And again, we got the pen tool selected, and let's make another mask. Maybe something like this. Now we want to make this shadow the same color as whatever our background is going to be. Right now it's black, but I think let's create a background which is just a super dark shade of the purple that we're using for the text. So I'm going to press Ctrl Y to make a solid. Let's change the color. I'm going to paste in the purple I used for the text and just bring it right down here to a really dark version of that purple. I'm also going to just Ctrl C to copy that hex code. And now for the shadow, let's change the fill color to that same dark purple. And you can't see anything at the moment, that's because we need to drag it on top of the main text layer. And let's twirl it down just like we did for the highlights, and increase the feather again to 20, or whatever value you used. And I'm going to change the blending mode to dissolve, just like we did for the highlight. And again, we can move this around a little bit. If you're feeling lazy and you just want some one-click text animations, check out AE Juice. They have an insane amount of resources that can really level up your projects. My personal favorite is the Glitch Kinetic Typography Pack. I mean, look at these, they are genuinely really cool. They even have a free version of the plugin with over 500 drag and drop assets, such as animation presets, scripts, VFX, sound effects, and more. I also have a pack of 20 text animations available on my Gumroad, so go check that out as well. Now back to the video. Next, we're going to come back to our main text layer. Right click, add a layer style, and choose Inner Glow. Let's twirl down the Inner Glow options. Let's eye drop the color to our purple, and make it a light version of our purple. Let's zoom in so we can see the glow a little bit better. We can change the size if we want to. I'll up it to about 10. And again, let's change the blend mode to dissolve. This just gives a nice highlight around the text. I think I might lower the size actually to seven. I think I might also come back to the shadow and make it a little bit lighter, something like this. I think it's looking nice. Let's change the label color of the highlight and shadow to something else, just to make things a bit neater. And one thing we're also gonna do here, you'll notice if I press Control T and I change this text to something else, the highlight and the shadow don't change as well. So right now we can't edit our text. To fix this, what we need to do is parent the source text property of the shadow and the highlight to our main text. So to do that, let's twirl down the shadow layer, twirl down text, and we have source text here. Let's do the same for the main text layer, and we can use the pick whip next to the source text on the shadow layer, drag it to the source text property on the main text. And if we now twirl down this, we can see what it's done here. It's basically said, make this equal to the main text layer. And we can do the same for the highlight, but to make it a little bit quicker, I'm just gonna copy and paste the expression, hold Alt and press source text and paste it in there as well. Now let's twirl these down. Let's even lock these highlight and shadow layers so we don't accidentally select them. And now 
we can change our text and it's going to also change the shadow and highlight layers. It's looking pretty awesome already. This also means we can animate our text and the highlight and shadow layers will follow wherever we animate the main text. So for example, let's add a position keyframe on our main text and drag this keyframe along a bit. And now we can drag it down and I've just realized we've missed a step. Let's control Z that. Unlock our shadow and highlight layers again and let's parent them to our main text layer. So just highlight them both. Use the parent pick whip onto our main text layer. And now we can create a new keyframe by dragging the position down and we got our animation working. I think it would look cool if it moves up and then scales up. So let's set a scale keyframe at two seconds. At one second, let's scale it down. Press U with this layer selected to show all the keyframes. So this is gonna show the position keyframes as well. So now it comes in and scales up. We're gonna change the easing on these. So highlight them all, press F9, come to the speed graph editor. Let's change the easing so it comes in super fast and then slows down. And then for the scale easing, we want it to be more slow at either end, fast in the middle, like this. Now, if you like how this looks, you can leave it here. But I think at the moment it looks a little bit too perfect and we can rough it up a bit, make it look a bit more analog. And the way we can do that is to create a adjustment layer by clicking layer, new adjustment layer, add an effect to it called turbulent displace. And right now it's a pretty extreme effect. To make this much more subtle, let's change the size down to maybe three. Let's leave the amount at 50. Actually, I think three is a bit too much two it is. And what this has done if we zoom in is it's kind of roughed up the edges. And what we can also do, because right now it's looking quite static once the text has stopped moving. And just to add a little bit of movement, we can come to the evolution options. And here's the random seed. If you change the random seed, it's going to sort of change how the turbulent displace looks. We can actually press alt and click on random seed. And we can set an expression down here to make the random seed constantly change over time. And the way we do that is we use the time property. And then let's multiply that by a certain factor. And whatever number we type in here is going to be the speed at which it's changing. So you can play around with this. I'm going to go for 20. And let's play this. And if we zoom in a bit, you can see it changing there. You can play with the amount, the size of the turbulence, along with this random seed property to get some varying looks. Just for fun, let's make it a bit more extreme. Let's go for 5 for size. And let's slow down the uh, random seed which gives quite a different look. So we could leave this animation here, but I'm going to try and level it up a bit by adding an animated texture. And to do this, I'm going to use AE Juice. So I'm gonna to come to Window and open my AE Juice Pack Manager. And you can see all the packs here that you can get access to. And again, there'll be a link in the description. I'm going to open the Urban Style Texture Pack. And here we have some really cool animated textures. And we can add these to our composition with a single click. I think texture 16 looks nice and subtle. So let's add that. I'm just going to double click it and we can see it's added it to our composition. So let's just drag it back a bit on the timeline and we're going to drag it down in our layer stack to just above our purple solid. Um, let's change the blending mode to color dodge. And also if we zoom out here, because the texture is in 4K, which is sometimes very useful, but for this composition, it's only 1080p, so I'm going to scale it down to 50%. And if we now play this, the animated texture has really brought the animation to life. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Please send me your finished animations on X or Instagram at Holmes Motion. I'd really love to see them. See you next time.